everybody, it's Amalia, and I'm here today with the Oso oh Inspired Collab, and this is for the month of March. So for the month of March, we're doing paper strips, and our inspiring artist is Terry Walker. I will insert a picture of her project right here, and you can see some links in the description below for the project that she made in her blog post or her Instagram ID, as well as the list of all of our uh, collabers. This is a collab by Crafty Al, oh so inspired, and uh, as you know, she's got a team of collabers on this, and um, after this video, be sure to go into the description and check out their videos as well and see how they got inspired by this month's project by Terry Walker. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, you know that uh, for the sheet load of cards that I do every month, I work through the same paper stack until I'm done. This is the Coral and Navy paper stack from DCWV. And I've been working with this paper stack for a couple of months now, so I'm close to finishing it. And you know when you work on a paper pad, you've got lots of scraps. So I've taken all my scraps and I'm going to work on my inspiration card based on all the scraps that I have from this paper pad use my scraps, I usually make what's called serendipity papers. And that's just lining your scraps up on uh, your paper. And in this case, I just took all the different sizes of strips that I had. I didn't even cut them down to match in size, but I laid them across another piece of paper. With this one, I used alternating cards that I sort of met in the middle as a chevron. Uh, but I've been making these for years. Lindy what? Lindsay Weirich from The Frugal Crafter dubbed this uh, serendipity paper. I'm going to dig into my scrap box and show you some of the other serendipity papers that I've made from previous paper pads that I've used up. I always take the strips or the bits and pieces that are left over and I adhere them to the back of a piece of cardstock that's about four and a half by five and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half. And um, it makes for a really beautiful sort of design. But this particular one, I made it look like it was quilted together. Typically, I'll just take strips of paper and put them, lay them up against one another on the paper and tape them down. Um, I don't leave spaces in between. I don't like the look of space in between. So I butt them up against one another and make them fit nice and tight. Here's an example of one that I used with Christmas papers. And this one... Uh, you know, and the majority of it was just one paper, which I think looks nice as well. Let me show you how the inspiration card was made. I've taken a couple of samples of the paper and I'm going to cut them down to about half inch strips. Uh, my pieces of paper are about eight inches long and I'm cutting half inch strips. You'll only need about two to three and I'm using three different types of design paper. I've got all my strips cut down to size and I want to place my strips down uh, evenly and I decide to line them up and put a piece of tape down to keep them in the same spot. And I'm going to lay my strips down. I'm using a glue stick which is very unusual for me but I couldn't find any of my other glues which I usually keep right there but my desk is a bit of a mess right now. So glue stick works fine. I liked doing this design. I like the results, but it is very finicky. Trying to space each of the pieces evenly with a little space in between to sort of, I guess, imitate brickwork or whatever. Uh, it was very finicky and I don't have the best eyesight <laughs> and I don't like doing it this way, but uh, I like the, the result. Again, I like the result, but this took a long time and I prefer just to butt the pieces up against one another, but you don't get a really nice fine look like this does, kind of looking like, uh, like brickwork. Uh, you can tell even at this stage, it's gonna end up looking really nice. When I filled all the strips up to the top, I go ahead and remove the tape at the bottom ones and I glue those down to uh, finish up the brickwork. Once I've glued all my strips down, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. I turn my paper over and I cut from the back, so I cut it nice and flush. 
I will show you all of the finished cards at the end, but right now I'm going to show you how I make my serendipity papers. I simply take my ATG and cover the whole thing with plenty of uh, tape, and then I start filling in all the bits and pieces, kind of like a puzzle. At the end of a paper pad, you've got so many bits and bobs pieces left together. There's strips, there's blocks, there's rectangles and squares, and um, I just kind of fit them together uh, on a piece of paper, and um, since it's all the same paper from a paper pad, they all go together. They're all meant to go together, so there's no clashing or, or anything like that. And I like the eclectic look of this when it's done. And just like with the previous piece, trim off all the extra on the edge and you've got your finished serendipity background. So let's take a look at what I've created for my paper strips cards. I've created four cards. You saw me create two of them. And uh, I just used some more ephemera from the paper pad. There's a piece of tape sticking to my arm. I used some enamel dots from my stash to add a little something, something to the cards, a little butterfly I had in my stash, a little hello sunshine sentiment from my stash. Everything's from my stash, <laughs> including that piece of tape on my arm. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Leave a comment. Bye.